Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. You know, several years ago, we installed a Liberty 287 half horsepower uh, backyard sump pump. And I'm going to show you the little clip of that. Be sure to watch to the end of the video so that we can give you the notes of how well this pump worked. Okay, so today we're installing a Liberty uh, pump. And this is a model 287. It's a half horsepower. And this thing's really powerful. It's heavy too. <laughs> it's got a nice float system as water rises in the pit, kicks on the switch, pump kicks on, and we'll send it out. The reason that we're using this uh, half horsepower is because remember, we're picking up all this water that we're bringing down through that trench from that hill and the garage and several catch basins. You can kind of see the grade of just his yard. We're gonna put another catch basin there. A lot of water coming down here and then it's gonna get pumped out all the way out to the street. So this Liberty model 287, again, half horsepower pump and it's still 110 volt, which is the good part about that. Sets up the same way as any you know other good pump. We're gonna start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter. This screws right into the port. This has an inch and a half discharge, and once it comes up out of the pit, we're gonna enlarge that right away to two inch. So you screw that port, screw that adapter into the port. Next, you're gonna have a piece of PVC that we've already cut. This is to support the, ri the riser where we're gonna put our check valve. So let's go ahead and glue that in place. Put a little bit of primer on the air and your glue remember that you want to put that on there while it's wet you can put it on while it's dry too but it definitely gets stickier and tackier quicker when it's wet push it in and hold it just for a couple of seconds and that's going to set up real tight next we're going to put our check valve on and remember that a check valve only allows water to flow one direction we're pumping almost 150 feet uphill, about a foot and a half to two feet. We don't want that water to come back. You know, each time the pump kicks on, we don't want that water to come back in the pit. We want the pump to take it out. So there's a little arrow, if you can see it. You see that arrow? That tells you direction of flow. So we wanna make sure that we set that pointing upwards. The check valve is held together with stainless steel no hub clamps and we're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten them down on there there's actually a little slot that this band sits on just got to get it in place and then you can tighten it up just as tight as your drill can make it i've already tightened this top one now we're going to i've cut another piece a small insert because our 90 is going to sit on there. We're actually coming out of the side of the pit. So we want to make sure that we have the pieces already cut. Again, stainless steel no hub. Pop it in. Make sure you get to the bottom of that coupling. Slide your no hub on. Tighten it up. Nice and tight. Now before we put our 90 on there, now before we put our 90 on there, I'm gonna set the pump back in because we need to come out the side of that pit. So let's set it back in the sump basin. So let's set the pump back into the sump basin. Remember that pump's a little bit heavy, so bear with me. <laughs> now we're gonna stick our 90 on here and we're gonna drill a hole through a two inch hole for the inch and a half pipe right through the side of the basin. Okay, so I've got the pipe laid in our trench. So this is the direction that it's coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling the hole right here with my handy dandy Black & Decker 20 volt drill. This is a two inch hole saw and we just wanna cut right through it. That hole is the exact outer diameter of our inch and a half pipe. Okay, so 
I've got everything secured to this point right here. Next, we're gonna glue our 90 on there. So let's do that. We'll start by putting some primer, if you have it available. <laughs> you don't have to use that, but a lot of people like it. On this application, I definitely like it. This is a very powerful pump. It does create about 30 pounds of pressure, so we need that. Need some glue, some glue on our 90. We're gonna stick this in place. Just push and hold. Perfect. Next, we're gonna go ahead and slide our inch and a half pipe through the hole. And you can see it lines up just perfectly. And then it's gonna come out and it's gonna change to two inch right there. And then it's gonna run all the way out to the street. So again, let's prime this up, glue it up. Perfect. Get our glue on place. Prime it up, glue it up. And then we're just gonna slide it through and stick it together. Let that set up for a second. And we've got this ready to go. So next, we're gonna go ahead and put our inlet line in. You can see here's the inlet and here's the inlet pipe. We're gonna slide that right through this hole. First, we have to make a little slice in this pipe. We do that with the hacksaw, just a little slice. We're gonna squeeze it together. We're gonna to squeeze it together and then slide it right inside that hole. It actually expands once it comes inside and makes a really tight fitting. So that's really about it on this installation of the sump pump. Again, this is a Liberty model 287 a great pump 80 gallons a minute that's a couple of trash cans every minute this pump puts out even on a two foot head which is the rise from the bottom of the pump it's actually a three foot head comes up and it's going to go up about a foot all the way out to the street so we just installed a Liberty, this is a effluent pump, which means that it can pick up three quarter inch solids. If little rocks drop in there, it'll be able to pick those up and suck them right out through that line. The impeller is that strong. It also pumps about 80 gallons a minute. <clears throat> this, is, this has eight amps when it runs, but it takes quite a bit to start it. It takes almost 20 amps to start. So you're gonna need to have at least a 20 amp breaker installed. It comes with a 10 foot cord and it's 110 volt. We're gonna leave an extension cord here for the homeowner and he'll have to have an electrician come out. Basically, we're all done with that. We're gonna go ahead and snap our lid in place and cover it up. Okay, so you can see our inlet line comes into the sump basin. And then we've got an outlet that has an inch and a half discharge port, so we switch immediately to two inch and this two inch all coupled together, glued together, runs all the way out to the street. The Liberty 287 half horsepower pump worked great. It moved that water no problem until we had a big, big rain. In other words, three or four inches came down within the hour. What happens is the sump basin is full of water and that magnetic float when the pump's underwater for a period of time no longer functions. So we had to go back and replace that pump. Would I recommend the Liberty? Uh, you know, I think the Zoller is a much better pump. So again, the 287 worked really good. This Liberty, it did work well. But when the pit is full of water for an extended time, the pump stopped working. In other words, the magnetic float would not kick on. And of course, the backyard stayed flooded and flooded and flooded. We had to go back and replace that pump with our reliable Zoller M98. After we installed the new Zoller M98, that system works great. You know, that was what, four, maybe five years ago, and that pump is still working, working so good, keeping that whole backyard dry. I think that Liberty makes a good pump, but they really need to change that switch, the on-off switch, that magnetic float, after it's been underwater for a period of time, it does not lift water. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm.
Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.